Um, all right, guys, we've got another exclusive interview for you from Bang. We've got president and CEO of Bang, Jamie Pearson, and interviewing her today is Wes Eater, GVB of Revenue. Come on out, guys, and take it away. Let's get a round of applause for these two. Hello. Good morning, everyone. We have my notes. Yeah, give me a notes okay. there. Watch out for those Hi, chairs. everybody. Good morning. So, Miss Jamie, yes. tell me about Bang. Mr. Who is, Wes. Who is Bang? What does Bang do? Let me see a show of hands in the audience. How many of you are familiar with our brand? Okay, quite a bit of you. That's normal. We are one of the oldest, if not the oldest, um, edibles brands in cannabis. We were founded in 2010 by a master chocolatier and his cannabis partner. This was a guy who was putting chocolate in Whole Foods and Dean and DeLuca, um, gourmet chocolate. So it wasn't a couple of stoners that they were going to get rich quick doing cannabis. It was a master chocolatier who had amazing chocolate and was convinced that he should put cannabis in that chocolate and use it as a, a way to deliver medicine to people who needed it. So long story short, he packed up his facility in New Mexico and he moved to California and Bang was born in Oakland in 2010 with a single flagship chocolate bar that won its first High Times Cannabis Cup before those were pay to play. It was a legitimate win. And we've since won 10 High Times Cannabis Cups, all of them legitimate non-pay to pay um, cups. And I say that because you can see brands that have 26 time cup winners. Well, then I always wonder how big was that check you wrote? <laughs> um, we expanded to CBD in 2011. So we are 11 years old as a cannabis company. We are 10 years old as a CBD company. And think about 10 years ago, who was doing CBD? Who was even thinking about CBD? We were selling CBD in dispensaries 10 years ago. We expanded to several states. Uh, and we continue to be non-plant touching. We do that through licensing. So what we really do is harness other people's money, other people's licenses, and other people's uh, human capital. But what we provide in exchange is a product that people love and that people know. And we essentially are a branding and marketing company. Um, so that's who Bang is. And I'll tell you this story a little bit later in our presentation but I want Wes to introduce himself because he is the latest addition to our team. <laughs> I'm the shiny new uh, addition. I love it. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Wes Eater. I'm from New Haven, Connecticut. Uh, I was born into a beverage alcohol family. Uh, my grandfather started a company uh, 1933 on record, but perhaps a little bit before then. And, you know, fast forward 46 years later, I was born. Um, I was then, um, I got submerged into the beverage alcohol industry. Um, and so I learned the off-premise, meaning retail stores, the on-premise, meaning bars and restaurants. I understood how to sell through and with our salespeople. I understood accountability, supplier management, supplier sell through, depletions, reporting. I swept floors. I drove on trucks. I did everything so I could really understand it. The problem was it wasn't my passion. Um, the reality is that I'm a weed head. I've been smoking weed since I was in my teens. And um, it doesn't always translate over into the uh, Groundhog Day alcohol business. So in 2012, I decided to move to California. Um, and I started selling in the uh, traditional market, or really the medicinal world, as California called it. And I went from one cultivator who I met at the gym, because obviously in those days, people weren't very foretelling of what they did. Um, went from one cultivator to two, three, four, five, to about 15 different cultivators. I was buying, selling, collecting all of their product. The lowest hanging fruit in California was the fact that there was zero consistency. There was zero um, repetition and repeatable systems. And, and based on my background, I simply took that I transplanted it over and because I had the culture and because I understood and I love weed myself, or cannabis, um, it really translated over well to me. 
So 2017 came, started a distribution company in Southern California called Shelf Life Distributing, um, did extremely well, and in 2019 had an exit, um, was acquired, um, stayed on for about a year, um, and then truth be told, I needed a little therapy post the uh, hangover of California cannabis, <laughs> moved back to Connecticut, um, where I reside now, um, and uh, you know, spent a little time, and then I ran into Jamie at a dinner, and I immediately um, was enthralled because number one, it's bang, and number two, it's just I get to work potentially at that time for you. So there's yes. my story. Can you tell me yours? Well, it's a mutual love affair. Um, I grew up in cannabis. Uh, I tell people, you know, I really was born into the industry. My dad's been growing cannabis 56 years, and I'm 52, <laughs> so literally all my life. And it's that wax on, wax off um, knowledge that I have where I didn't really, I never used it. So I didn't really feel, feel like I was a very cannabis um, knowledgeable. But what I understood was how to trim a bud tightly. I understood, you know, how to check the trichomes. Are we ready to harvest? Um, I knew that, you know, if the plants got too cold, because I, I live in Montana, I grew up in Montana, and this, my dad's grow was in Montana. So right about October, when I flew here for this conference, it was snowing when I left and we hadn't harvested the outdoor grow yet. So we have it all, you know, ready to be uh, set up, get warm and protect it from the snow. Like these are things that has, that have just been part of my life, my entire life. Um, and then my, my cousin on my mom's side is DJ Muggs from Cypress Hill. So I literally on both sides of my family uh, grew up with both the, um, the dad who does not use alcohol, considers it poison, and cannabis makes him feel better. Um, has PTSD, went, did two tours in Vietnam, and a lot of the grow goes to other veterans in our community. And I grew up in a, on a cattle ranch in a town of 800 in Montana. So everybody knew my dad was the weed dealer, which wasn't always so great for me in the 80s when I was a, a basketball player and an athlete. Um, and then uh, my cousin's the poster child of the cannabis activism going to jail and, you know, all of that. He lit a joint on Saturday Night Live, which they got banned for life. And, you know, so cannabis has been part of my life, my whole life. And Muggs asked me to find him a weed deal for the band. Uh, one thing led to another. And I found Scott and Richard, who founded Bang. And that was seven years ago. I officially... I worked that whole year doing that deal and then officially came to bang in 2016. So I've been with the company um, like seven going on seven years. Um, Scott took the company public in 2019 when that was the thing to do. That's how you raised capital. The Canadians had um, allowed companies to be listed on the security, you know, to the TSX and the CSE. And Scott thought that was the right decision to make. So he took us public. I felt like we were probably a little too small, um, you know, but that wasn't my decision. And we went public. And four months later, Scott stepped down. Um, he let the company know he did not want to run a public company. He wanted to raise the money and exit. And the board asked me to step in. So I've been the CEO for two years. And at the end of 2019, right after we went public, I'm sure all of you remember what happened to the stock market, not the cannabis industry stock sector, but the whole market was, was crashing at the end right after we went public. And there was no capital. The cannabis sector dried up. There was no investor interest whatsoever. And then we were hit with COVID. And right about that time, I was introduced to uh, what was then CGOC, Cannabis Growth Opportunity Corporation. Uh, it's a publicly traded fund. They've changed their name to Plant Based Investment Corporation. They're probably here in the audience. They're our largest shareholder. And Graham Simmons, who's the chairman of the board of PBIC, is the chairman of the board of Bang. And really, I would consider uh, kind of the coach off the field. I've got the quarterback's helmet on with the mic in it. He's telling me what audibles to call, and I'm out there, you know, running, running the show. Um, Graham helped me clean it up. Because really what happened is Scott had this big ambitious plan for Bang. We were going to be the general mills of cannabis. We had 150 SKUs. We were, you know, we were in Europe. We were conquering the world and we were running out of money. And the reality was we were, we were like every other capital or cannabis company. We were bleeding um, capital. 
when I took over, I was a real estate investor for 25 years. So that was my job pre-cannabis. And I just looked at the numbers and said, hmm, this isn't going to work. So I literally closed our offices. I fired everybody, which was really difficult to come in, be made the president, and then tell everybody you're fired. And I fired all of our IRPR people. Everybody got fired because I had to stop the bleeding. I did that. I met PBIC. Graham helped me clean it up. And what we did is we took this incredibly ambitious plan and we got laser focused on what we do best. And what we do best is chocolate. When I run out into the world, everyone says, oh, bang, bang chocolate, bang chocolate. They don't say, oh, bang, bang CBD, bang mouth spray, bang, bang anything. They say bang chocolate. So we got very focused on that. And our strategy is a three-legged stool. Number one, we're going to conquer California. Chocolate's a really small portion of what cannabis is in, in the marketplace. Everyone knows flour is the leader, then concentrates and pre-rolls, then edibles. But of edibles, it's 70% gummies. So chocolate's a really small portion of what's selling in the world. We're going to conquer that portion in California because that's where brands are built. And we have 11 years of experience in California. Everybody knows us there. That's low-hanging fruit. The second leg of our three-legged stool is expanding the brand and continuing to expand the brand into uh, the rest of the U.S. Um, and Canada. So we did that. We're within Diva in Canada. We're the number one chocolate in Canada. And our milk chocolate is the number one skew in Ontario. So we're selling more skews of Bang Chocolate than any other flour company or pre-oil company or concentrate company is selling of any one skew. So we're crushing it in chocolate right now. And the expansion's working. We just announced our deal with True Leaf. And so I don't know how many of you read that. Thank you. <laughs> True Leaf's going to bring us to their 11 states. We're already in seven states. So we're going to have the largest footprint. We actually already have the largest footprint of any edibles brand in cannabis right now. And then our CBD division is in 47 states through e-commerce and uh, Europe, nine states. So PBIC helped me clean all this up. We got focused on what we do well. And in 2021, we said what we're going to do is execute our strategy of conquering California, expanding the states, and um, innovating SKUs to capture more shelf space. And that's what brought me to Wes, because in 2019, one of the people that I fired was Origin House, who was getting uh, bought out by Cresco. And there was a change of control clause in our contract, and that was an opportunity for us to take California back and control our brand there. And I found a company that I thought was going to do great called Shelf Life, and Wes and I struck a deal, and Shelf Life was our distributor. About three months later, Shelf Life got bought out. He failed to mention that <laughs> deal was going on. I wasn't um, allowed to speak. <laughs> And so when I ran, I, I already knew Wes's character. I knew what kind of a business he ran. And when I ran into him at that dinner, I thought, this is the guy that's going to help me execute this strategy. This is the guy that understands how to win California. He understands how to expand brands to states. He understands supplier, vendor, off-premise, on-premise, all of that. So I knew I had the right guy when I found Wes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It, it's It really... Uh you know, I won't get emotional, but it's, it's such a tremendous opportunity um, to be part of a legacy brand that has been around for 11 years. And some of the nuances you talked about, the struggles are normal to any business. And if you survive, just so all of you know, if you survive 11 years in cannabis, especially California, like you, you've you made it. It's, it's from here, it's now that things are cleaned up, my job is to generate revenue. So how do we really go after revenues? True leave is one of them. I can't take credit for that, but I can at least support it. From there, it's how do we really expand? What happens with innovation? Yes, we've always been known as a chocolate company, but the reality is if we're going to hyper-focus and do the one thing and the one thing we do best, which I would consider to be confections, 
then it all of a sudden expands categories, right? You're allowed more categorization. You're allowed to go into a retail store and all of a sudden you can pick and choose as a salesperson how to get in that store. There's a reason and a need to be in that store in that retail outlet. So to me, it's like, it's just such a tremendous opportunity with that innovation. When you talk about expansion, so yes, 11 states, seven states, I want to be able to be in 50 states. I want to be able to be global. I want every man, woman, and child that's 21 plus to be able to enjoy our products. And the reality is it's not that difficult once you understand that vision. My biggest obstacle and my biggest hurdle is, you know, government right now, right? It's federal. federal. So if there's federal legalization, I don't need a plant. We don't need a plant in 20, 30, 40, 50 states. You, don't, you just don't need that type of infrastructure. I don't want to move to the middle of the country, but I would love to have a huge operation middle of the country. We're shipping out all 50 states and globally. And the reality with that is, again, it's not that difficult. It takes some regulation or regulatory changes, but the way that you've set this company up, the way that it's going, our trajectory, our path forward and everything else, I mean, I'm just beyond excited about how much growth opportunity there is. And I, fortunately, I inherited what's already a really good company that is, again, poised for growth naturally. So it was mm -hmm. sort of a, it's a nice time to be a part of the company. <laughs> it's, it's good to be bang. Our mission is to make the fairly enjoyable, ridiculously fun. And the reason we landed on that mission, when we really tried to encapsulate as a team, what is, what is your mission when you, all of you that are in cannabis, what is it that we're trying to do? Um, the medicine makes people feel better. You cannot feel bad if you're having fun, but let's talk about the fact that we all know people use cannabis in, in, the, in the states where cannabis is just medical. We know cannabis is being used medically, but we all know everyone's using it to get high. And they get high to alleviate pain, to sleep, to do these, they alter their brain to alter the state of the homeostasis of their body. If they're feeling pain, they're not having fun, they don't feel good. So when you use our product and it improves your quality of life, it does make what is impossible to have fun possible to have fun. So we decided that our packaging should embody that. So we have this very medical looking package on the outside, but when you open a bang bar, it's a party, <laughs> it's a party in a box. You, you have this ridiculously fun experience that should be fun when you open a bang bar and then inside, you know, we have to have the childproof pouch. Um, so we have the childproof element in here. We've got the medical element in here. And then we have the fun element in here. So we really are embodying our mission. What I'd like to say to the audience before our time is up is I really want, I know all of you are going to go look at our share price and you're going to see that we're trading it, you know, hovering around five cents and our, and our, our market caps around 10 million. When you harness other people's money, other people's license, and other people's capital, that means they take the lion's share of the revenue for the millions and millions of chocolate bars that we sell every year. But what we're doing is planting flags. We're, we're expanding. The brand is being put in millions and millions of people's hands throughout North America, through our CBD division, and in Europe. So there are a lot of people, whenever I go anywhere, oh, bang, oh, bang, oh, bang, everybody knows our brand because we're playing the long game here. And the long game is post-federal legalization. And that's the moment that the big guys are gonna come in and you're gonna have the Mars and the Hershey's and the, the big beverage companies. And we're starting to see Constellation Brands invested $5 billion to hedge their losses because in places where cannabis is recreationally legal, alcohol consumption's dropping, opioid consumption's dropping, and, and cannabis is being disruptive to big business. So we know that if we're going to parallel process building the airplane while in flight right now, we've got to make money right now as a company. And what we have to do is plant our flags at the same time. Well, doing that, going to get a cannabis license in New York, the Etain folks could tell you that was an expensive proposition. And, and it was really limited and really difficult. We couldn't have 
done that without Etain having blazed the trail in New York. We couldn't have done it in Arizona without Harvest blazing the trail in New York. We couldn't have done it anywhere without our licensees blazing that trail. But what they got from us was an amazing brand, and what we got from them was the ability to plant a flag. And now the flag is being planted all over America, and our brand is everywhere it needs to be. So we're poised to be one of those either wildly successful Hershey Foods um, or Coca-Cola's that has a series of products and we're innovating some hard candy and we're innovating some hot chocolate and some other confections to do that. Or somebody's going to make us a big offer like maybe Canopy just did with Juana. Who knows? That's that's kind of one of the things that, that you work for. <laughs> Not a bad position to be in. <laughs> Not a bad position to be in. So I want you all to be aware that there's a difference between a market cap and an enterprise value and we are very purposely planting flags. So the other, the other last thing I want to talk about, we're all talking about MJ Biz next week. Uh, we're doing a benefit concert with the Blues Brothers. We just launched the Blues Brothers chocolate with Jim and Dan. We have the fried chicken chocolate, which is dark chocolate with fried chicken seasoning and cola oil and corn flakes. And that's from the scene in the movie where... He says, I want to order fried four fried chickens and a Coke. And then he says, I want to order dry white toast. And our white toast bar is a, basically like a Nestle Crunch bar made with white chocolate. And they're going to play a, a benefit concert for The Last Prisoner Project, which is a um, charity that's really near and dear to my heart. You guys got to remember there's 40,000 black and brown people sitting in prison while we're up here selling millions and millions of chocolate bars. So Last Prisoner Project is getting people out of jail. It's expunging records. And we, we support Last Prisoner Project every month. We, we donate product to their events. We give them money. And Jim's on the board. Muggs is on the board. And we really are supporting that um, passionately because I don't think anyone should be sitting in prison for this plant. Well said. Well said. Are there any questions before we wrap up? I think we're out of time anyway. We are out of time. I would say that was a very, very strong ending and a very exciting presentation. Everyone give it up. Very impressive stuff. You guys were not lying. This is not your first rodeo. You guys are fantastic. Very exciting things coming from Bang. If you guys are watching online, make sure you check out their online properties. Um, there's a lot to learn about this organization, and I, there's a lot of good things to come, as Jamie just demonstrated for you guys.